I think you already know what this video is gonna be about. I don't know what exactly convinced me to visit Germany, but I sure know what didn't convince me. Their travel tourism slogan. Germany, the travel destination. Uh, is Germany the only country that didn't get the memo? Vietnam, timeless charm. Norway, I'm powered by nature. Maldives, the sunny side of life. Yeah, Germany is the only country that didn't get it. It's a travel destination. But maybe I'm wrong and this is how marketing and catchphrases work in Germany. Volkswagen, das Auto. Alright, I think I'm getting the gist of it. I think I know how marketing in Germany works now. Big Mac, the burger. iPhone XR, the cell phone. Ikea. The furniture store. Anyway, after seeing these entertaining ads, I expected to meet really entertaining people. Uh, hello, my name is Hans. I go to bed at 7 p.m. I like sparkling water and botanical documentaries. And I should probably keep this to myself, but sometimes I come late to meetings. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? But coming to the capital Berlin took me by surprise. It's very liberal and a bit quirky there and instead of these dull boring Germans I came across some really cool people. Sometimes probably too cool for me. I only do ecstasy when the right techno song comes up. Huh? What did I tell you? Auf Wiedersehen! When someone talks about the worst sounds in the world I think of snoring, train scraping the tracks, the cries of thousands of dying babies and the German language. It reminds me of... I would never be able to learn a language with so many words that sound like demonic incantations. Versicherungsgesellschaften. The problem is that in Germany, instead of using five words to describe five things, as everywhere else in the world, you use one word to describe infinite number of things. This has to complicate so many aspects of life. Jonathan here, only three questions away from one million dollars. He's got the last phone in front, Lifeline, he's in beautiful shape. Here it comes, question for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Jonathan. How do you call the narcotics prescription regulation in German? Pneumono ultramicroscopic silicovulcanoconiosis? Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften? Rindfleischetikettierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz? Betäubungsmittelverschreibungsverordnung? I took German classes in high school, but none of this seems to ring a bell. Rindfleischetikettierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. I think I've heard that somewhere, but I have no idea if that's the prescription regulation. I'm gonna use the lifeline. I'm gonna call my friend David. David, what is David doing? Luckily, he's a teacher in the German Institute of Washington. He was born in Germany, so... <laughs> oh, lucky you! Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh. All right, let's get David on the line and see if he can help. Hello? Hello, David! Yeah. Hi, Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hi. We got your friend Jonathan with us right now. He's doing pretty well. Good. He's going for a quarter million dollars. Wow. He said you work as a teacher in a German institute. That's right. They call me the German teacher. <laughs> Classic. All right, David. Jonathan's going to come on the line, read a question, four possible answers. One of them is the right answer. You got 30 seconds that start right now. Hi, Dave. Hi, Johnny. So, how do you call narcotics prescription regulation in German? A. Pneumono ultramicroscopic silicovulcanoconiosis. B. Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften. C. Rindfleischetikettierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. Or D. Betäubungsmittelverschreibungsverordnung. 
Oh, what a shame. While in Germany, I attended the Cologne Carnival, one of the biggest carnivals in the world, and also an event where polite and respectful Germans dress in crazy costumes, drink from morning, and can finally free themselves. I went as a prisoner, but didn't realize two things. That the number 88 is a Nazi symbol, and that some people were way too drunk to be friendly. Ha! You think you're being funny, asshole? Sorry, man. You think we don't realize we've done wrong in the past? Please, I didn't Take mean off the to fucking offend. costume or break your jaw! I mean it! They call me the angry guy for a reason! Man. You don't wanna mess with me, you racist prick! Luckily, another random guy stepped up and saved the day with a really heartwarming speech that touched everyone standing nearby. Still, it was quite a bizarre moment. I don't know why. Hey, 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 stop arguing! This is an event where we celebrate and drink together without disputes. I'm sure this guy didn't mean to offend our nation and it's just a stupid coincidence. So shake hands, raise your glasses and celebrate unity, friendship and freedom. Understood? My stay in Germany was a pleasant one. I enjoyed it very much and I just like to say Und bitte vergesst nicht meinen Kanal zu abonnieren. No, no, no! What have I done? No!